Let me ask you a question that you might actually get at a technical interview. Uh, not this specific question, but maybe something along the lines of, I have a file and it has multiple lines and each line has this specific word that occurs multiple times. How would you go about replacing only the second or the nth occurrence of the word? Second, third, fourth, whatever it is. If you asked me this a couple of months ago, I probably would have said something along the lines of, I would create a console application that would parse the content of the file and then manipulate it that way. But now, after discovering the power of the command line, <laughs> I would say that I would use the stream editor command or the sed command um, or the sed command. Some, the thing about Linux is everything has like multiple pronunciations and they're all correct somehow, like butterfs or better file system or betterfs. Yeah, um, I'll show you how to use that command and to accomplish that task at the end of this video. With that being said, hi, I'm GPS and welcome to a new video. Let me start with the why. Like most of us, we learn things because it'll make us better at work or it's required for work or whatever. Work, you know, let's just say work. I knew when I started my role at ACG, I was gonna be working on Linux related projects and I simply didn't feel comfortable enough with my, at that time, skill set of Linux to work on any of the projects. So I sat down with my manager and we fleshed it out and I decided that I'm going to take a certification within a certain amount of time. Um, the first attempt at certification, I actually failed. I made a video on that. Um, and then I took it a second time and I passed. I always felt reluctant to learn Linux because for some reason, out of everything in tech, it's that one space where I feel like I definitely don't belong. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because of my lack of experience or I don't know the right tools or or I'm not sure what it is. And now that I've actually dipped my toes in, in, in the space, I've realized that it's a foolish mindset to have. Um, I'm quite intrigued and slightly in a healthy way obsessed <laughs> with uh, the Linux and, and I actually have Pop! OS, which is an Ubuntu-based distribution on my desktop. And I've been using it as my main operating system for a couple of weeks now and I know people are going to hop in the comments now and say, you should be using this distro or you should be using that distro. Hey, I'm going to give a bunch of distros a try. Just not right now. I'm, I'm trying to just get comfortable right now. Um, but yeah, in this open source space and me having the mission to make, you know, technology and technical education more accessible and less daunting to everyone, becoming more familiar and learning about things like Linux and open source seems right up my alley. So I'm glad I'm doing it. Now let me talk about the how. I have no shame in saying that when I'm learning something new, I need a variety and lots of learning material. And that's videos, that's text, uh, that could be like books or I don't, I don't know, some documentation and obviously hands-on. Disclaimer, as most of you probably know by now, I work at A Cloud Guru. So that means I have full access to our entire catalog and we have multiple Linux courses. So that helped me a lot. Um, I watched the Linux Essentials course and the LPI 101, which is sort of a step above it. But what I like is that I can grab a, some kind of lesson. And if I need like another type of explanation or I wanna watch a different explanation on it, I can go to another course and see if it covers that topic. Sometimes with certifications, they have overlap and, you know, topics will be covered in both of them, but they might be explained in different ways or different contexts. So I like that. In terms of books, I have two. This one is the command line, well, the Linux command line. It's sort of like every command, well, not every, but the majority of commands that you could possibly need to use is probably in this book. And what's great about it is it gives you the explanation and it gives you like most popular arguments that you could use. And it also gives you kind of like a, an exercise to do or like a playground exercise. I think that's what they call it. Yeah. So I just go in here. So I'll watch a lesson and then whatever command the lesson is on or whatever kind of task the lesson is doing, I'll hop into this book and I'll find it. Right. And then I'll do literally copy out the samples and then just run through them. Um, so that by then I'll have like multiple examples cause I'll do the examples from the course. 
Then I'll do the examples from this book and then I'll keep going. Another book that I use is this one called Linux Basics for Hackers. By no means do I want to become a hacker, um, though security is a very interesting topic and also something that I'd like to explore, but maybe next year, because I'm just overwhelmed this year. <laughs> but this is great because it teaches you a lot of different tasks, but it gives you, it teaches you those tasks in like the context of a, a hacker. Um, so it's very hands-on. Like for example, you use things like, um, or you learn things like using and abusing services. And I know there's uh, like a chapter on bash scripting and uh, one that I really, really enjoyed that um, I got a, a lot of benefit was uh, this controlling file and directory permissions. Permissions were something that I had to go over many, many times, like watch the videos again, read the um, Linux command line book again, and then read the security book again until it finally got in here. I was able to get hands on enough to really explore the commands that you're expected to know for the Linux essential certification. Luckily, the command line is something that's pretty easy to get hands on because it's not like, hey, you need a website to play around with or to deploy in Azure to play around with some service. You really just need a command and some kind of task, whether that's uh, editing or modifying permissions or, you know, bash scripting or moving files around, renaming, all that kind of stuff, right? And I just summarized what I learned. I'd spend an hour in the morning just kind of going through the theory and watching the different material. And then I would let the day go, like get my work done. And towards the end of the day, I'd spend another hour getting hands-on and then writing the notes. So by no means am I a Linux expert, but I'm like 5% ahead of where I was before and that's progress, right? Next steps for me, I'm studying for my next cert, which is the Linux Foundation Certified Sysadmin. And here's when people are gonna come in, why aren't you studying for the Red Hat cert? Look, the Red Hat is great. I simply don't need the recognition that the Red Hat cert gives you. And I like the fact that the Linux Foundation one is distro agnostic. Plus they have a lot of overlap. So if I study for one, I probably just have to fill in the gaps and I'll be able to take the other one. Alongside that, I'm doing a lot more hands-on things. Like I deployed a ghost blog to an Ubuntu server on Azure. The next thing I want to do is deploy a next cloud server also probably in Azure and Azure because I'm most comfortable and I have a lot of credits there. Um, yeah, if you're not familiar with Nextcloud, it's an open source alternative to something like G Suite or Office 365. And like I mentioned at the beginning, this world of open source has so many things going on. Um, I'm also in the process of finding all the tools that I use in my workflow and, f and, and finding open source alternatives for them. Um, Cause it looks like open source projects tend to respect privacy a lot more, right? And I'm willing to support something like that even if I have to pay for it. Cause I think those things matter. Yeah, so overall I feel a lot more comfortable in the command line and I think that's a win especially in any kind of technical role, it's just crucial to understand what's going on in the command line. Yeah, and that's it for this video. I do wanna give a shout out to a couple of friends of mine, Alf, Rishabh, and Parveen. They joined me on a stream last Thursday and we just talked about anything, <laughs> anything really. Uh, we all happen to work in cloud related roles. So it was kind of nice to just sit down and talk to friends about you know working in cloud. I wanna do those more often. I'm still trying to figure out what's the best time. I did put a poll in the community tab. So go check that out if you're interested in that. And I'd love to have like a bunch of different friends and, and, and maybe even strangers, as long as you're respectful to hop on stream and then we can just chat. Yes, uh, and all right, now this is the end of the video. I will see you in the next video. But if you made it this far, I'm gonna show you how to use that command. Alrighty, so let's display the file. It's a text file. And you see we have Gwen, GPS, Gwen, GPS, GPS, Gwen, GPS, GPS, GPS. Alrighty, so how can we only replace the second occurrence of GPS with Gwyneth on every single line? Well, let's use the stream editor command. So the said, and then it's S for substitute. And then we'll first type in the word that we're looking for, GPS. Then we're typing in what we're gonna replace it with and then we're gonna tell the command which occurrence we wanna 
replace. So by putting two, we're telling it, hey, we want to replace the second occurrence. Now we tell it from what file. We'll just say text file.txt. And I'm going to tell it to send the replace text to a sample file, sample.txt. There we go. So now if we take a look at the sample file, you can see that we have very similar output, except the second occurrence of GPS has been replaced with Gwyneth. You see here, GPS, GPS, it's now Gwyneth. First, second occurrence here, it's now Gwyneth. You notice that that first one hasn't been replaced. All right, but say now we wanted to replace the second occurrence in only the third line. Well, we could preface the S command, the substitute command, with a number to indicate that. So we can say something like said 3s, and then the rest is pretty similar. So GPS, Gwyneth, and then the second occurrence from the text file, and let's create a sample.2 file. Oh, I forgot the redirect there. Alrighty, so now if I do cat sample2, we'll see here that the first line is the same, the second line is the same, and then the third line, the second occurrence of GPS, was replaced. And that's a little crash course on the set command.